Hello people, in this video let us look at congenital dacryocystitis. What is dacryocystitis? Basically, inflammation of the lacrimal sac. Okay, this, uh, if you have seen already the previous videos, you will know what lacrimal sac is, right? So here you have the gland, the lacrimal gland. We are not talking about this. We are talking about the inflammation of this portion, the lacrimal sac, right? Which is helping in the passage of the tears. So basically the tears are secreted from the lacrimal gland and they enter the lacrimal sac via the canaliculi, right? The puncta and the canaliculi. So this lacrimal sac basically gets inflamed. Why do you think in this case it is getting inflamed? Because there is an obstruction in the nasolacrimal duct. Okay, so basically you can see here, this is the nasolacrimal duct, right? Which is helping in Whatever is there in lacrimal sac has to enter the nasolacrimal duct. Now this nasolacrimal get gets obstructed. Here you have the valve of what? Hasna. Now usual problem will be with this valve of Hasna. Some problem here. Obstruction, obstruction. Now there is inflammation of this lacrimal sac. This is dacryocystitis. Okay. So where are we? Congenital dacryocystitis we are looking at. Let us look at the introduction to congenital dacry dacryocystitis. It is chronic inflammation of the lacrimal sac which is occurring in newborn infants. Okay guys, it is occurring in newborn infants and it is known as dacryocystitis neonatorum or infantile dacryocystitis. So easy names only, not difficult for you to remember. So basically it is inflammation of lacrimal sac and as it is in children or neonates, it is called as dacryocystitis neonatorum or it is called as infantile dacryocystitis. Okay. Now, what is the etiology? Why does this happen? Basically, there is stasis of secretions. So, whatever secretion is happening from the lacrimal gland, they are getting stationary because they cannot move out. So, the stasis of the secretion in the lacrimal sac due to congenital blockade of the nasolacrimal duct. What is blocked here? Nasolacrimal duct gets blocked here congenitally. Okay. It is a very common occurrence. About 30% of newborns are believed to have the closure of the nasolacrimal duct at birth. So, it is a very common uh, situation. This one, congenital dacryocystitis is very common. 30% of newborns will have this. So, that is pretty common, right? So, they will have the closure of the nasolacrimal duct. Now, why exactly does this get blocked? Let us look at this. This is a very common occurrence. Let's put this in the introduction itself. What do you say? Let's put this thing in the introduction. Okay. Now, why does the nasolacrimal get, duct get blocked? What do you think, guys? So, you already know one reason here. That is, um, the uh, valve of Hasner has some problem, right? Valve of Hasner has some issue. So, basically, valve of Hasner. So, membranous occlusion near the valve of Hasner. Membranous occlusion near the valve of Hasner. Okay? It's the most common cause. Then you have the Congenital uh, nasolacrimal duct block due to epithelial debris membranous occlusion at the upper end near the lacrimal sac itself. There will be some problem. So, there will be epithelial debris. Okay. And some um, upper end of lacrimal, uh, this nasolacrimal duct, right? Upper end of nasolacrimal duct that is near the lacrimal sac itself can get occluded. Complete non canalization or rarely bony occlusion. So, there will be complete non canalization. So, I am guessing uh, complete non canalization means it is completely blocked from up to down, nothing, or there can be a rarely, it can be a bony occlusion. Okay, so you have understood why this nasolacrimal duct actually will get blocked. Okay, then one more cause is there here that is bacteria. So, bacteria also can, um, like Staphylococcus, Pneumococcus, Streptococcus, Haemophilus influenza, Enterobacteriaceae, all this also can cause occlusion, okay, because of which the nasolacrimal duct can get blocked. So, which are the bacteria? Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, Pneumococcus, Pneumococcus also is a type of Streptococcus only, Haemophilus influenza, okay, and then they are talking about Entero. Bacteria C. Okay. Now, 
we have we are done with why it happens why does it happen because of stasis of secretion why does the stasis of secretion happen because the nasolacrimally duct is blocked why is it blocked because the valve of hasna some membranous occlusion some epithelial debris complete non canalization bony occlusion some bacteria because of all this it will get blocked now let us look at the clinical features guys we are looking at what today today we are looking at a dacryocystitis in that we are looking at the congenital one we have finished the introduction and the etiology now let us look at the clinical features okay now what will the clinical features of this be so basically the clinical features presents with mild grade chronic inflammation so obviously you can see here it's a mild grade chronic inflammation they are saying mild grade chronic inflammation so what else are you seeing here epiphora epiphora usually developing after 7 days of birth okay so what is epiphora guys epiphora is nothing but a uh, blockage to the drainage of the tears is epiphora that's all nothing new here it is a blockage of the you have already seen in our previous video about tear film we have discussed that time we have spoken about epiphora how basically it cannot flow out the tears cannot flow out right of the nasolacrimal duct so epiphora so it is uh, then there will be mucopurulent discharge from the eyes mucopurulent discharge from eyes right epiphora basically blockage of outflow of what of the tears right mucopurulent discharge from eyes next next let us look at the next point here regurgitation test so these are the clinical features you'll have to elicit this probably regurgitation test so in regurgitation test um, when pressure is applied over the lacrimal sac mucopurulent discharge regurgitates from the lower punctum so let us try to understand that here let's bring out a good diagram so basically what they are saying is you will apply some pressure first of all this is blocked correct now this has got inflamed inside this there will be some mucopurulent discharge uh, mucopurulent substance that is mucus and pus now what will happen you will put some pressure here over the nasolacrimal sac so you will get a regurgitation sorry regurgitation from the lower from the lower puncta you will get some discharge okay so this is a regurgitation po test positive regurgitation test will become positive when you apply pressure here and there is discharge i think it will be very painful to do this okay so then we are moving on to the congenital dacryocystitis we are looking at the clinical features right so in clinical features we have finished the regurgitation test next one will be swelling so clinical features obviously they'll come with inflammation swelling then uh, epiphora mucopurulent discharge regurgitation test you will do basically swelling swelling um on the sac may appear eventually so basically a swelling over the sac area will appear eventually so these are the clinical features so you can see almost the features here right the lacrimal sac seems to be swollen now let's move on to the next topic here that is the differential diagnosis so are you fine comfortable let's move on to the differential diagnosis of what congenital dacryocystitis okay differential diagnosis complications treatments three more topics are there under this so let's take it up here of what congenital dacryocystitis don't get confused with dacryocystitis and dacryoadenitis cystitis is we are referring to the sac adenitis will refer, refer to the lacrimal gland okay here we are referring to the lacrimal sac now what will be the differential diagnosis basically you should not confuse it with ophthalmia neonatorum congenital glaucoma so you should not confuse it with the gonorrhea kind of situation ophthalmia neonatorum or any other uh, infection for that matter of the eye of the baby newborn and the congenital glaucoma so what are the two differentials congenital dacryocystitis needs to be differentiated from other causes of watering in early childhood especially ophthalmia neonatorum and congenital glaucoma ophthalmia neonatorum and congenital glaucoma okay so all of these can result in watering eye so you should be aware that 
you should differentiate congenital dacryocystitis from these two. What are the complications of uh, congenital dacryocystitis when not treated in time? Uh, there can be complicated uh, recurrent conjunctivitis. So, the complication will be recurrent conjunctivitis. So, the conjunctiva inflammation. Then, acute on chronic dacryocystitis. So, basically on this chron uh, chronic dacryocystitis, they are saying the congenital one is anyways chronic, but you will have some acute attacks here. Okay. Then you will have lacrimal abscess. Lacrimal abscess. You can see this child seems to have that, right? Pus inside. And then when it bursts open, you will have a fistula formation. So, <clears throat> a fistula is an abnormal opening, right? So, here it is coming from the lacrimal sac to the skin. So, what do you think the treatment for uh, this congenital dacryocystitis is? Let us discuss the treatment. Let's take it up here. The treatment of congenital dacryocystitis. So, people, let us move on to the treatment of congenital dacro dacryocystitis. Okay. So, the first thing they are telling here is massage over the lacrimal sac. Okay, you massage over the lacrimal sac area. And then you give some topical antibiotics. Okay. Then probing of NLD with Bowman's probe. So basically all this is symptomatic. The obstruction has to be removed. Probing of the nasolacrimal duct with Bowman's probe. Okay. Then what is the third thing? Balloon catheter dilation. Balloon. What is the spelling of balloon? Balloon catheter dilation, dilation, okay. Then intubation with silicon tube, intubation with, with what will you intubate guys? With silicon tube and the fifth one is dacryocystor rhinostomy operation, DCR operation. What is DCR guys? Dacryocystor rhinostomy, dacryocysto rhinostomy, okay, operation. So, let us look at each of these, okay. So, what are we looking at currently? We are looking at the treatment of congenital dacryocystitis. So, so basically, when not treated in time, what happens? A congenital dacryocystitis, it can get complicated into what? Into recurrent conjunctivitis. We have already seen in the complications, guys. We saw that it can uh, become a recurrent conjunctivitis or it can become an acute attack of the dacryocystitis of the chronic dacryocystitis will have an acute attack lacrimal abscess fistula correct all this you have seen so basically give treatment so how will you give treatment it depends upon the age of the child okay so uh, based on the age they will decide the treatment massage over the lacrimal sac area and topical antibiotics so it is the mainstay of the treatment so basically, massage increases the pressure in the sac, obviously, and it helps to open up any membranous occlusion. So if there's any membranous occlusion, because of the pressure, it may get opened up. But I am just thinking, would it be very painful to do that? So what they are saying is, put some pressure here and massage. Okay, and if there's any obstruction, membranous occlusion here, it might just open up, right? So it should be carried out at least four to uh, four times a day. So, somebody, somebody will have to do it at least four times a day. Then you will have to also give some antibiotic drops. Okay. This conservative treatment coupled with spontaneous recanalization cures obstruction in 90% of the infants up to six to nine months. Okay. So, they are saying up to six to nine months they will be obstruction free. Okay. So, along with uh, this massage and antibiotics, you should do what? You should also give the Recanalization. That's what they are saying. Did we write the word recanalization somewhere? I thought we wrote the word recanalization. Okay. Then let's move on to the second one. Probing of nasolacrimal duct with Bowman's probe. So this should be performed when this condition is not cured by the age of 6 months. So some people wait till 9 to 12 months under general anesthesia. So they are giving general anesthesia. Remember here they are giving general anesthesia. And uh, you will perform the probing. You should not injure any canalicula, etc. So, you will probe. Uh, a single probe usually will relieve the obstruction. Okay. If there is failure, you can try to repeat this procedure. 
after a month. Okay, so what will you do? You will probe the nasolacrimal duct with a Bowman's probe. Which probe are you using? Bowman's probe. This is a surgical procedure which is done under general anesthesia for the baby. Right? 9 to 12 months later. After it's born, after 1 year or 9 to 12 months, they are preferring. So guys, look at this uh, Bowman's probe, how it looks. This is Bowman's probe. Okay, Bowman's lacrimal probe. Okay. So now let us move on to balloon catheter dilation. So look at this balloon catheter. So they will now do a procedure. Balloon catheter dilation. Let's understand this balloon catheter dilation. So basically with the help of a probe carrying inflatable balloon. So what will you do? There is a probe here. It is carrying an inflatable balloon. Right. So using this they will do catheter. Catheter dilation. When do they adopt this procedure? If this probe thing, uh, repeated probe thing is failing, right? And um, there, there seems to be an obstruction because of some scarring or con constitution, okay? It is not just some distal membrane, but because of some scarring or constitution, if there is problem, then they will use this balloon catheter dilation. They are saying when this repeated probing is failing in children, okay? Then... Coming to the fourth one here guys, intubation with silicone tube. First tell what you have seen so far, you saw that pressure and antibiotics, then you saw that uh, Bowman's probe, now you saw that balloon catheter. Now we are moving on to this intubation with silicone tube. Intubation with silicone tube. So intubation with silicone tube, let's look at this one now. So what will they do here? If repeated probings and ballooning uh, balloon catheter dilation are failing. So, if these two procedures are failing, this one is what this one, first one is the conservative treatment. Then they are going to probe, then they are they will catheter. Now, all of these are gone. Now, they are trying intubation with silicone tube. Okay, the silicone tube should be kept in the nos nasolacrimal duct for about six months. So, they are keeping a tube in the nasolacrimal duct itself. Okay. Let's move to the last solution here, guys. The last solution is DCR operation dacryosis, dacryosistorhinostomy. Okay. DCR operation when the child in brought, is brought in very late. Okay. Or repeated probing, balloon catheter dilation or intubation are failure. So, all these things have failed. Then what they are saying is now, now all these uh, things are failing or the child is brought in late. So, what you do is you just do the conservative treatment. Okay. Massage put topical antibiotics that you do and then after four years right till four years of age you wait after four years of age you conduct this dacryocystorhinostomy operation okay so looks like they will bypass the blockage and allow the triers to drain normally okay so that is what it looks like in this dcr itself there are so many techniques guys like uh, conventional approach right conventional external approach will be there endonasal DCR is there, endocanalicular laser DCR is there, lot of operations are there. Looks like we will have to cover all that in a separate video when we come to that topic. Okay, So, in this video what have we seen? We have seen congenital dacryocystitis. So, you saw the introduction. It is a very common condition. It is caused because of the nasolacrimal duct being blocked. The clinical features would be inflammation, swelling, epiphora, regurgitation test you will do. Then you will see uh, the differential diagnosis. Don't confuse with ophthalmia, neonatorum or congenital glaucoma. Complications you have seen, all abscess, fistula, etc. Then uh, treatment, you are seeing that there are five techniques to treat the congenital dacryocystitis. Okay, that's all for now. What is this? Bowman's probe. Okay, good. So, let us meet in the next video. Okay, that's all for now guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.